Hey there, welcome back to Manatic Stringworks. Glad to have you here. So please remember to like and subscribe for more video content. Well, here we are back on the workbench with this Chinese Rickenbacker in walnut and maple. So last video we identified a few issues that we want to look at and one of them is the bridge. So the alignment of the bridge, I think you can see it better here. And yeah, the body does curve a bit, but then if we look up top here, we spin around. Yeah, it's it's just not lined up. It's not square to the body, so that maple neck through section and we identified that the scale length should be 34 which means this needs to be pushed back about an eighth of an inch or so a little more maybe still allowing for some adjustability on the saddle also if you remember in the last video we basically have no radius on the strings they're all touching so these two saddles need to come up now I don't see an adjustment for that <laughs> so I'm gonna have when you take the strings off I think I'll take these saddles out and have a look at them you might need to shim them with some metal stock or aluminum tape or something alright let's get at it so the first thing I'm gonna do actually is remove this pickup cover. It's really in the way. <laughs> and not very practical. Now the problem with these of course is that these screws not only hold the pickup cover in place but they also hold the pickup in place. <laughs> so it's not so easy as just taking the pickup cover off. to re-thread it in there to get to the pickup and there's a little ring right there I can get this one back I think I can get that one in yep that's working yeah of course I lost that right <laughs> the little spring so I need to get that back in there Alright, so a pair of very small needle nose pliers. <laughs> I'm going to hold that spring under there and try and get the screw in. Alright, that worked. I think we have success. Tune it up and then just check the intonation. So that's sharp, G string sharp, D thing's buzzing, it's sharp as well. A is a little bit sharp, sharp in the tuning too. And the E, well the E is flat. Okay. So if we look at the position of the saddle, so we had uh, G string was uh, sharp. The D string was sharp, the A string was sharp, and the E string was flat. So if we look at the position of the saddles, if we move this back about an eighth of an inch, that should uh, flatten out the string, which is what we want. Same with the D and the E. Now you'll see that there's lots of play here in the A. There's a little bit of play here in the D. G is pretty much at the back of the bridge. And this E string, which is flat, really flat well look at that <laughs> this thing is way back here so that has to move up anyway so we'll intonate that as well so I'm going to take the strings off and then we'll move this bridge So 
So I'm going to take off this D-string. I noticed that this tuning machine is really stiff. It doesn't turn really well. So I'll have to have a look at that too. Add it to the list. So since the strings are off, and I'll probably be doing some work on the neck, I'm going to use this notch straight edge 34 inch scale because this is a fender scale not a Rickenbacker scale and with the strings off we've got just a bit of up bow I'm going to straighten that neck out a bit so righty tighty so I'm going to go clockwise about a quarter turn alright we're good and flat now Alright, so let's have a closer look at this bridge. <laughs> I noticed that the saddles themselves are removable. They're these little billets of steel with a little notch. That's, that's actually kind of cool. But these are definitely get lost. So I'm going to put those on the parts tray for now. <laughs> okay. And again, so these knurled knobs are basically to keep the saddle in place oh, we have a couple more screws, aha! so if we look at this bridge so the saddle I should say So we have two adjustment screws on each side, so for the base and treble side, so that'll move the bridge up and down like that. But we also have, I would call that a stabilizer <laughs> in the middle. Again, that you would once you've set your height on the base and treble side, then you would screw that hex screw down so it touches the bridge. So offers a little support I guess but also maybe sound transfer tone that kind of thing it's definitely not an adjustment for these two saddles up and down and these saddles do not adjust up and down individually there is a tiny set screw right there which will let you move them back and forth for intonation so I'm gonna have to figure out something for these two the a and the D to raise these saddles up to get that radius that we want to match the fingerboard which we'll measure after. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on just for the moment so I can use it as a visual guide to where we want to place this bridge and see if we line this up correctly with the body if it just lines up you know, pretty naturally where it should go. Okay, I'm going to start by removing these screws, leaving this one in. I'll loosen them up and use the driver to get them out. Now, so I've got these three screws out, I'm going to loosen this last screw. I use that as a pivot point. See if we can pivot this over. Okay, there's something sort of binding it there. So I'm going to have to lift this up and I can have a look. It doesn't want to just go over. That could just be the lacquer of the finish under there, that's preventing it. Even just that little movement, I moved it just a bit, is better. Well, let's get this thing right off then. Okay, I'm happy where the plate is. That looks square to that maple insert. Looks a lot better back here. 
Let me put the bridge uh, saddle back on. Okay, and that's this has moved, which is good. Okay, well, I think what I'll do is we'll tighten that down. And we'll drill some holes. So what I'm going to end up doing is filling these three holes, leaving this hole here as a reference. And that will be basically a pivot point to line this up so that it's square with the body and that maple insert. I'm going to position it about where it needs to go and I'll show you how much off it is. Right? It's not much, <laughs> but it's enough I think. And if we put the bridge back, we're going to see that our 34 inch line is going to match up with that saddle pretty much where it is. I mean ideally that would be up further. So you have more adjustment, but that's going to help with everything else as well. I think that will be enough though. We don't need to move this bridge way back on the base. I think we can leave it with, again, that pivot hole. Just square it up. So that looks about right, just by eye. Just a little more, like that. All right, let me bring you in and show you. So here's our pivot point. And you can see that the holes are just off center. Not by too much, but enough that uh, we will need to fill them. So here I have some eighth inch dowel stock. And these holes are a little smaller than that. So I'll just drill these holes out to eighth inch. These three. That'll be a lot easier to work with this dowel. So even though nominally the dowel is one eighth, it's not. It's a little smaller than one eighth. So the drill is one eighth. Drill bit. So it's just a little bit of play, which is perfect, because that allows space for the glue. And I'm just going to use regular woodworking glue, easy to clean up. While we wait for these dowels to dry, <clears throat> I noticed that the ground wire, the wire was sticking up and the bridge wasn't sitting flush. So I'm going to push that back in and I'm going to use some tape here, aluminum tape. So this is conductive. I'm going to push that wire, the actual, so the wire itself, right, sheathing down under. So it's not exposed. I'm just going to tape this here. So that'll ensure a good contact point. And also keep things flush. <laughs> as flush as possible here. And of course the bridge is going to sit over that. And you won't see any of that of course, right? Of course, now that I'm giving everything a good look, <laughs> you can see that the bridge, and with the bridge plate uh, cover off, you can see that this whole thing is crooked too, much like the bridge. It's off probably about an eighth of an inch. Actually, I think I have a square here. So if we put the square against the pick guard, there's a gap there, so I'll show you here. There we go. 
<laughs> so hopefully that shows up on camera right here. So square to the pickguard, which is square to the maple insert. If I square that up with the pickguard, you can really see the gap right here. And it tapers down. So that's again, that's about that eighth of an inch, which is the same as what the bridge was. Oh boy. <laughs> Do I want to take all these out and reposition? Maybe. I'll have a look at it. <laughs> so I'm going to use a self centering bit or a VIX bit. You can see you put that into the screw chamfer and then a little sleeve moves as you go down, right? So I'm going to put one in, tighten it up. And then put the others in. So I've trimmed off the little plugs. Just putting this one screw in to use as a pivot. Just snug it down a little bit so I can still move things, and then I'll tighten it where when I'm happy. Actually, I've got that square out. Will it fit in here? Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I'll well, square to the pick guard. That's pretty nice right there. And I look at the line. Again, I have to ignore this, right? Because <laughs> that's not square. Look here and here, that looks pretty good. Just finishing up here, tightening down this screw again. Let's check. Yeah, that's nice. That looks much better, you know, based on the maple insert <laughs> and the pick guard, which runs parallel to that. Okay, good. Bridge on. Yeah, so that's going to move the saddle. We have more adjustment there. We can move it around. These will come up. Perfect. So using a 1.5 millimeter, I was able to loosen that hex screw that locks in the saddles in their position. You can see they're just flat underneath. Flat here, there's no height adjustment. So we need to figure out how we're going to raise these up to give us, I'll just put that locket in a bit so it doesn't rattle around, to match the radius of the fingerboard. So let's check that. So what to do, what to do. So there's a few options I guess. One is we could take this billet, I was thinking maybe if I flatten it and said lower it, that might be an option. Also, if I shave off some of the bottom, actually on the E and the G, but no, that's not going to work. What I could do is build up the bottom. So put some shim stock, like maybe a piece of brass, or a couple of pieces of brass underneath, and that'll raise up these two saddles. Thought maybe as well, what if I put some of that aluminum tape, a few layers, layer up aluminum tape in there, and then rest this little billet in there. That might be a quick and easy solution, which, again, I try not to modify anything, so I don't want to do anything to the bridge, like shave it down or cut it or whatever. So if we can add shims or maybe using tape almost as a shim here, or maybe on the bottom too. Maybe I'll try the bottom first. Add a few, whole bunch of layers of that uh, aluminum tape, see how that works. Let's try that. So before we do anything with the saddles, I want to check the radius of the fretboard. So I've got a 10 out here, and you can see light underneath. Right, space, 
I'll just move down the fretboard. It's not a compound radius. No. 10 doesn't work. Let's try a 12. There's a 12 inch radius. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah. No space under there. Okay, so 12 inch radius it is. I just want to see how well this will show up on camera, but I put those little saddle billets back in. If I can hold this steady enough. You can see with the 12 inch radius that the A and the D strings need to come up quite a bit. Probably a 16th at least. So I'm not going to figure out how to do that. Alright, so after about, I lost count, <laughs> 24 or 30 pieces of aluminum tape, I've built up the bottom here, and again, can you see that? You should be able to see that. Nice solid chunk of aluminum, almost a sixteenth of an inch thick. It's definitely over a millimeter when I measured it, so... That's that's significant. I'll do the A string right beside it. I've already put about 12 pieces on there, so I've got at least 12 more to go. <laughs> All right. So I'm just noticing something else too. <laughs> Looking at these saddles closely. See, there's a scallop here. Well, that scallop's actually supposed to be facing backwards. So as the string comes up, you know, it wouldn't touch. Now, if I were to do that, move them all backwards, I think we'd have to move the bridge again right up flush to the back of the base. That's probably why this base was set up and shipped this way <laughs> because of that original uh, placement of the bridge. So it doesn't affect anything. The strings come across and they don't touch anywhere so I'm not concerned about it. But you know that's what you get, right? <laughs> Alright, so here I'm going to take the 12 inch radius gauge and sit it on top of the strings and I'm pretty sure you can see, I mean I can see it visually, we have a nice radius now <laughs> that matches the fingerboard much closer. I can still add some tape or whatever I need to do. So that worked out really well. I think. Now it remains to be seen how that holds up. So with a rough setup, just to get the height right, tweak the neck a bit, uh, we've also gotten rid of that buzz we had, especially on the, the D and the A string. And that's because we had no radius, so the strings were flat here. Now, it could be there's a few high frets, and we'll address that <laughs> later on. 
But yeah, so just with a setup of about 560 force and 12 thousandths uh, neck relief, it's looking pretty good. So, just to recap, this bridge is now square to that maple insert, so the neck as well. We've got the intonation point right at 34 inches. Take that tape off now. And there's room to move forward and there's room to move back. And all of the saddles have room, substantial amount of room to move. Now, it is kind of funny these things, these saddles should be turned the other way so that scallop is facing backwards so the string comes up but again the strings aren't touching the back of the saddles here so that shouldn't be an issue and I might still take this whole bridge and move it back right up to the edge of the body here so another eighth of an inch or so just to gain a little more intonation space and maybe turn those saddles around we shall see so let me know in the comments uh, how you would have raised these two bridge saddles. Would you have used some metal stock, either brass or aluminum, shims? <clears throat> would you have shaved something down? You know, do you think this aluminum tape fix will work? So I'm very curious to hear what uh, you guys have to think and what you would do in the same situation. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for watching. There will be another part to this where we work on this pickup ring, uh, check the electronics, and then do a full setup of the base as well. Alright, bye for now.